Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining this presentation in association with National Drama. The topic for today is thinking about the practicalities of putting on a production during lockdown or COVID-19. Um, and the particular focus will be with Key Stage 1 and 2 because that's my experience and um, I'm going to be drawing upon examples over the last year that I've done with those age ranges. But I'm hoping that some of the principles will be fairly universal for you regardless of what age range you're working with. To start off with, I would like you to think about the following question. What are some of the challenges with preparing a remote performance? So think about that quickly before moving on to the next slide. So hopefully we're able to come up with a fair few examples yourself. Here are a few of my ideas for what might be challenging. So thinking about adapting that show, particularly if you can't sing and you're used to doing a musical, how could you change that? Um, how could you rehearse the thing? How, how would you go about planning the project in the first place? And then with it being a film, engaging with technology, all of the challenges that come with using those resources. And then finally, how, how do you share a show? If you can't have a physical audience, what platforms can you use to share that performance? And I'm hoping that today I'll begin to address some of these concerns, thinking about how to adapt the rehearsal process, how to engage with technology and how to share this performance remotely. And like I've said, I'm going to be talking about two real life examples from my own experience. Uh, part, the first one, thinking about a Christmas production that was done with early years and Key Stage 1. And then also a remote performance that was done with Key Stage 2. So let's start thinking about some of the basic principles that are going to help you adapt to this process. Now, the first thing you need to do is start thinking like a filmmaker. This is a different process to preparing your ordinary school production because it's so much more technology focused. So you need to think about the process that um, someone would use to create a film and then apply that to your own preparations. So the first thing you're going to need to think about is the pre-production. So this is anything to do with the planning side. That's coming up with your original idea and concept for what the film's going to look like, what footage you want to get and um, who's going to be involved in the project. Uh, making sure that you have a really clear um, vision that you can share with others and then also preparing any resources that are going to help people to put on this project. So maybe that's some guidance, some step by steps, maybe that's some videos to help and um, support them getting on board with it. Then there's the production element. So that's actually the filming of the performance itself. But you are going to need to think about how to prepare for that as well. So making sure that you have um, the right equipment, making sure that you are set up correctly in terms of lighting, sound, your background and um, where you're going to be filming. And then any additional photography um, that you're going to be obtaining during that performance. And then finally, the post-production. So that is to do with bringing all that footage together and editing it to make a film. Um, so combining the sound, combining the film clips and then thinking about sharing it with others, how you're going to distribute it. Now, if you are project managing this, the main areas that you're going to be focusing on are the pre-production, so that initial plan, um, and then the post-production, so the editing, putting it all together. And it's worth spending a fair amount of time on the pre-production so that there's a really clear plan to share with others so that when you're trying to get other teachers or SMT on board, they know what they're signing up for and they're willing to participate. Um, and you can use this then to help share those responsibilities and hopefully allocate tasks to others. The best place to get people involved is actually in that production side. It's the filming itself. But in order for them to feel comfortable doing that, you are going to need to provide clear guidance. Um, but if you're planning way in advance, people know what is expected of them and then they can include that in their own teaching time, in their planning. Maybe they could um, include making making some props or craft for the performance um, as a table station that the children could um, create yeah, those objects which could be used in the performance. And then finally, it's worth mentioning that in order to edit this thing together, it is quite labour intensive. So you are going to need additional PPA time to help create that performance. Now, let's move on to uh, an example, real life example of this. So doing a Christmas play. And I'm going to go through those three stages and how I use them to help me prepare this performance. So the first stage is pre-production. And the idea is the first thing that you will start with. And I would say, keep it simple. When you're engaging with technology, lots of things can go wrong. So keep it short, simple, and try and make the best of, of what you're doing, get the highest quality of a more simple project. And the idea I came up with was a short film or photo montage with narration. 
So that would mean that the children acted out, they were miming what they were acting, um, and we could maybe get some photos of still images that could be added as well. And then the narration was recorded separately, and then both those things were combined later on in the editing process. The reason I did this is one of the main things that can go wrong when you're filming is sound. Uh, that's because microphones aren't strong enough on some of these devices. Um, so I felt it would be better to do that in a controlled environment and have either the class teacher or the whole class record that narration. Like I said, I did several um, films for this, one with nursery, one with reception and one with year one. So for nursery, we got the class teacher to do it. For year one, we got the whole class to practice rehearsing that and doing it all together in time and then for year one we did some choral speech so all the class speaking and then a couple of more able children said a few independent lines as well but we did record the audio separately script so you need to then think about using a story as the basis for your film it could be something you've already got something you write yourself or something you adapt but I would suggest using a short story that is led by narration rather than dialogue so that you can apply the principles that I've just talked about. Dividing and conquering. D divide the script up into different parts, beginning, middle and end, so that you can allocate a different section to each class so that they can focus on that part of the performance rather than trying to have everyone involved in the whole story throughout. That will mean bubbles different groups can rehearse separately and they can prepare the um, performance separately and then you will bring it together in the editing process. I would then say as well, just getting that script in a really good format and editing it so that you number each line. If you can see over here in the script narration um, example sample that I've done there, I've numbered each line um, so that it's really clear when I'm giving guidance what I'm referring to. And that's to do with the storyboard or the list of the footage that you need or require to be captured. So as you can see here, line one and two, I've referenced that in this list that I've created. I've said who's involved, what characters um, are going to be involved in that part of the story. And then I've suggested a short film clip of like 10 to 15 seconds that they can capture of the children maybe holding up a sign or pointing at something that's relevant to that part of the story. And that just means that there's really clear um, understanding of what's expected. Um, and it also gives you that then advantage of making sure that everyone's included and uh, helping your process by meaning that smaller groups can uh, perform at different times. So the, rather than then having to do the whole class and having children waiting around, getting frustrated that they're not involved, you could get a teacher or a TA to take out um, each class and each, sorry, smaller group, smaller section at a time, do that bit and then get a new group. And that then helps with, um, you know, how frustrating and long the filming process can be. You're staggering it. So you're taking a little group at a time so that you can get the best performance from them. Um, resources. So like I've said, preparing guidance for others, for teachers so that they know what to do. And we also did actions to songs, um, to carols. Um, so they couldn't sing, but we thought, OK, well, they can do a little dance. They can do some simple gestures that could be added to that music. So I created videos of myself performing these actions, which the children copied and then performed together. Um, yeah, like I said, there's lots of advantages to doing this. You're sharing out responsibilities. You're doing it little and often. And hopefully you can um, have a bit more quality control as you're working with smaller groups. So then we're moving on to the production side of things and that I'm not going to talk about loads because the best thing for you to do is to go on YouTube and to watch some guidance as to how to film effectively with equipment, how um, to prepare a Christmas production. There's a great article here I'd recommend looking at, but I will briefly mention a few pointers for this part of the performance. So you don't need a professional camera to do this. iPads, phones, tablets have really high quality cameras that pick up um, performances really well and they adjust to different lighting settings really easily. They're really easy to use. Uh, but you might want to think about having a tripod as something to keep um, the camera or the phone really, really stable so that you haven't got a shaky hand as you're filming it. Your setup. So thinking about location. When you're filming, natural light is the best because it has really good, well lit um, pictures on screen. That may not always be possible, though. So if you are filming inside, trying to have a plain wall or background, nothing too messy or distracting 
so that the audience is focused on the performer themselves. The footage. So like I've said, you can take children out in smaller groups um, and as the audio is being removed, you can then direct those children. So you can tell them, no, you need to smile more. No, you can need to go over there and you can move the children about um, and give them as many instructions as possible, because in the editing part of the process, that audio is going to be removed. So it doesn't matter if you're making a load of noise during their performance. Then finally, if you want to add any um, photos as well, you can take some additional photography and that will then mean you can include some children who maybe aren't the main part a bit more. So maybe you could have some photos of them making their craft or as their character, which will make them a little bit more involved in the production. And let's say that a child was isolating at home, they could then um, be included by providing photographs of them. OK, let's then think about the next stage. So you have got all your footage. You now need to collect it and organise it in one place. It is worth setting this up prior to getting people to film, making them aware of a really clear place where you want them to put the footage. So whether that's a folder on a shared computer network or whether you'll say, OK, I'll come at this time on this day and you can airdrop um, me the files from one iPad to the other. Whatever you do, you need to make sure that you have the files on the device that you're going to be editing on. So you might be editing on an iPad or a computer um, or a Mac. Whatever, wherever you're editing, those files need to end up on that device so that you can edit it. Now, in terms of what um, platforms you can use to do this, yet again, I'm going to recommend going on YouTube and looking at how to, do, to learn the basics for editing. A lot of these programs are actually really quite intuitive and simple to use. iMovie or Shotcut are really good programs to edit on. Shortcut works with Windows and I believe it's free as well. So that could be a good um, that could be a good program to use for your editing. The editing itself, uh, like I've said, you're going to learn much more if you watch these videos. But essentially, you're just collecting all these videos, putting them all in order. And if you've done your checklist previously as to what you want for each line, that's going to be really easy for you to know what's going when. You're then going to remove the sound from the from the acting. And then underneath that, you're going to underlay the narration. That can also mean as well you can underlay some music at various points and then you're going to synchronise that with um, the actions that the children have prepared for those songs. The final thing then is the distribution. So thinking about what platform you want to share this with. Now, in terms of safeguarding, um, it is possible to share your performance on a on a site like YouTube or Vimeo and for it to be private. So you can have a private link and a private Part and a password so that that can only be accessed by parents and families so that can reassure them if they're worried about them being footage of their children um, that they haven't consented to and that other people can access if it's private then only people with the link and the password can access it and the other thing to mention is that you could try and make a bit of an event of this it's quite hard when everyone's separate um, to get that sense of kind of watching it together as a community. But you could suggest, OK, why don't you watch it on the Thursday at six o'clock at this time so we can try and have a bit of a movie night of it. Um, and maybe at school as well, you could say, OK, why don't the classes watch it at this particular point in the day? Great. So now I'm going to move on to talking about how I managed a completely remote project with Key Stage 2. So that's going to be applying a lot of the principles I've already talked about, but adding that additional challenge of working alongside families to create a performance. So prior to lockdown, we had already decided we were going to be doing this play called Plastic Pirates. This is from a company called Schools Musical Company. Really good um, resources there. They have good scripts and music. Um, and they have something called an editable play, which is super handy because it meant with the script that I could add lines and I could cut lines. And for this project, I cut a lot. I cut a lot of the story. I cut a lot of the songs because it needed, like I say, to be as simple as possible and to be as manageable as possible. Um, I teach drama to these classes, so we were actually able to do this as part of their remote learning. So that would mean each week I would set them a task to complete. Um, now, the idea was to create a remote performance. So that would mean getting parents on side to film their children perform. So prior to this happening, I did need to seek permission from them um, and give them the opportunity to raise any challenges or concerns. And actually, no one did. Everyone seemed quite keen to get on board with the project. But the children were going to be acting independently at home. And I had to give really clear guidance as to how to go about doing that. Um, which I'll talk about on the next slide. 
Now, the next thing was thinking about finding an area to share these resources and collaborate. So essentially finding a a place which could be accessed by parents and myself where I could receive the footage and it was a centralized place rather than having one person email me one person send me a link via show my homework one person try and we transfer me we decided to temporarily get a Dropbox business account um, and that the parents could then collaborate on that accessing it via their email in terms of safeguarding we made sure that we had a, a individual folder for every child so that only their parents could access it. That means that there's no worries about other children downloading it or editing it or commenting on it. Only the parents and yourself have access to that. And then I had to give clear guidance as to when footage was expected. So I had a list of dates um, that I put out and in the lessons that I set, I said, okay, well, this is due by then. And that meant lots of staggered deadlines so that I could obtain the footage and begin to edit it as I went along. Uh, like I said previously, I shared uh, a letter and advices and guidance as to how to do that. Let's then think about the actual filming. So the production part, like I said, was done at home and this was completed by the parents. Um, I gave loads of clear guidance. I sent a letter, um, a link to a video and just I gave some clear pointers for stuff that I wanted them to get so thinking about the um, the angle that they were filming out thinking about how to have good lighting how to avoid kind of background noises how to have a playing background to try and make sure that the footage was of the best quality that it could be then uh, what I did in the lessons that I was providing I had really clear videos of the two of dances that the children were going to be copying so I would give a detailed breakdown step by step for how to do your dance this song and then I had like a dance of me doing the um, actions of the song the whole way through and I also um, gave them the option of doing different levels so if they were super confident they could do the whole dance if they weren't they could maybe just focus on learning the chorus or the verse and the chorus so that differentiation for them so that they can engage at the level that they're able to access it any children who were in school, I filmed. So any key worker children that were there, I was able to film and use that to my advantage because it meant that I could get additional footage of them. I could get them to make some sound effects for me if that was helpful um, or help me with the filming process itself. Um, but like I said, it was a project that was managed in class um, as I do deliver drama um, to the children at the school. So that was how I went about um, giving the guidance and getting them on board. In terms of the edit, so I had this um, platform Dropbox where I was receiving all the footage. I then had to organize it, so downloading it off there and making sure that it was put into the correct order. So then bringing all that footage together and as before, layering the dances to the music, um, making sure that I use titles and text to help explain the story if that was helpful or maybe adding in some additional photos to show Oh, OK, we're on a pirate ship. We're under the sea. Uh, but the most helpful thing was keeping a big checklist of what I had received from who and when I had included that child in the performance so that I could keep track of all the data that I was getting. And then the performance itself was shared privately on a video platform like the previous um, performances were. So what, uh, let's just quickly reflect on this itself. So what went well? It was a really enjoyable project for the children and families were really thankful for it. It was a really positive thing to get involved in during, you know, quite a difficult year. And it meant that some children who actually weren't as confident performing really went for it because they were at home and they felt a bit more confident. Um, most families, yeah, followed the instructions and embraced this opportunity to be creative and made it something to look forward to. The thing that worked the best was the dances, definitely the dances, because I could give really clear instructions with that and I could also choose the best of for it. So if I knew that, that child A was really good at the chorus, I could use an extract from that. And you can basically choose the best bits of their footage and then combine it together. So that worked really well. And also additional photos as well worked well to have a little montage at the end to a song of them dressed up as their characters. What was challenging? So um, it's, it's hard to manage something when you, you are doing it remotely and not everyone followed the guidance that was given. 
Um, so that was then hard to then manage the quality control of that footage. And you can do some things in edit. So you can try and um, make the audio louder. You can try and remove background noise a bit. But, you know, there's a limit to how much you can do that. Um, also, the additional admin as well. There was a lot of chasing up people who hadn't set footage. Also, um, providing technical support for those who were struggling. But overall, it was a really positive experience. I learned a load from the uh, project and families are really thankful to have something positive to enjoy uh, during lockdown. Um, so I hope that gives you some pointers for how you might go about adapting a performance to be remotely done. I just say again, keep it simple, keep it short. Were I to do this remote project again, I would re reduce it even more. I'd make it even shorter and simpler so that it was more manageable um, to edit together and to collaborate with others. Thanks so much for watching this presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and like I said, do follow the additional videos and um, articles that I've recommended in this presentation to find out more about how you can create a film of a performance.